In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to construct ensemble trees for classification. We will use the case of Sunnyview Bank to predict which bank customer is likely to respond to a home equity line of credit offer. In our studio, let's first import the data from the HELOC underscore data worksheet into a data frame and label it My Data. As you can see, the data frame contains four variables, age, sex, and income are the predictor variables, and HELOC is the target variable. As we discussed in the lecture, there are a number of different ensemble tree models. The most popular are the bagging, random forest, and the boosting tree models. We will first look at the bagging and the random forest models as they use the same R package. For these ensemble models, you need to install and load the caret, gains, PROC, and the random forest packages in R. Install these packages using the install.packages function if you have not installed them yet. If you have already installed them as I have, load the packages using the library function. Let's start a new R script. Now run these four lines of code to launch the libraries. As mentioned before, if you use a R version other than the version 3.5.3, .3, you need to run the following line of code in order to get the same random number generator settings as I do so that you will get the same results as I do in this demonstration. Because the random forest package requires that all categorical variables be declared as factor variables explicitly, we are going to use the as.factor function to convert the categorical target variable HELC and the categorical predictor variable sex into factor variables. Enter the following two lines of code.
let's run these two lines of code to convert the variables into factor variables. As we discussed during the lecture, ensemble models do not present an actual tree, but a combination of single trees, so there is no pruning involved. The fact that multiple models are combined offers a solution to the overfitting problem and makes the model more generalizable to unseen data. Therefore, we only need two partitions for the data set, a training and a validation data set. In this example, we are going to partition the data into 60% for training and 40% for validation data sets. By setting the random seed to 1, you will generate the same partitions as shown in this example. Enter the following lines of code. Now run these four lines of code to partition the data. We first use the random forest function to construct the ensemble tree model that uses the bagging strategy. The bagging strategy simply builds multiple single trees using randomly selected training datasets using the bootstrap aggregation technique. Since random data selection is used in the process, by setting the random seed to 1, you will get the same results as I will in this example. We are going to name the ensemble tree bagging underscore tree. The random forest function specifies the model structure, data set, number of single tree models to construct, number of predict variables to use in each single tree model, and whether feature importance information is provided. We set the end tree option equal to 100, which tells the function to build 100 single tree models. As there are three predict variables in the data, we set the m try option equal to 3, which uses all three predict variables in each single tree model. Remember, bagging tree is the one that uses all predict variables for constructing the single tree models. So specifying that we are using all three predict variables also indicates that we are using the bagging strategy. We set the importance option equal to true to produce the feature importance information. Now run these lines of code to construct the bagging tree model.
Now the model is saving in the bagging and the score tree object. Since this is an ensemble model, you cannot visualize the tree. However, we can view the feature importance information. The following function displays feature importance information graphically. We set the type option equal to 1 to show the feature importance in terms of the average decrease or mean decrease in overall accuracy. Alternatively, if we set the type option to 2, then R uses the average decrease in the Gini impurity index to compare the feature importance. Let's run this line of code. The feature importance diagram shows that the most important predictor variable is sex as the model suffers the most decrease in classification accuracy if the predictor variable is dropped. The second most important variable in this case is age. Let's create the confusion matrix by comparing the predicted class memberships and the actual class memberships of the validation dataset for the bagging tree and the following lines of code. Now let's run these two lines of code and take a look at the confusion matrix. The confusion matrix shows that the bagging ensemble tree model has an overall accuracy of 80% on the validation data. However, the model is much better at classifying the non-target classes correctly than at classifying target class cases correctly. Its sensitivity is 0 0.5577, whereas the specificity is 0 0.8851. You can improve the sensitivity of the model by using a cutoff value other than 0 0.5. I have shown how to do this when demonstrating the classification tree, so I'm not going to repeat it here. You can also create the cumulative lift chart the decile-wise lift chart, and the ROC curve as we did for classification trees. As the syntax for creating these graphs has been discussed in previous lectures, I will not repeat it here. Let's use the following lines of code to create these graphic performance measurements. We first estimate the probabilities of the cases in the validation data sets.
Then we convert the target variable HELOC to a numeric variable as required by the gains table. Then we create the gains table by comparing the actual class membership with the predicted probability. And then we display the gains table. Let's run these four lines of code to see the gains table. Using the information from the gains table, we can plot the cumulative lift chart We will use the lines function to create the base model on the cumulative lift chart. Now let's run these two lines of code to produce the cumulative lift chart. As you can see from the cumulative lift chart, the bagging model performs better than the base model, which represents random selection. Now let's create the decile-wise lift chart.
Let's run it. As you can see from the bar chart on the right side of the screen here, the bagging model also shows better performance compared to the random selection. If you target the top 10% of the potential customers with the highest probability of responding to the home equity line of credit offer, you are able to reach over 2.5 times as many customers who actually responded to the offer compared to randomly selecting 10% of the customers to reach out to. Now let's create the ROC code. We are going to plot the ROC curve as well as computing the area under the curve value. Let's run these three lines of code. As you can see from the ROC curve, the bagging model performs better than the base model in terms of sensitivity and specificity across all possible cutoff values. And the area under the curve is 0 0.8425, which suggests that the model is effective in identifying customers who are likely to respond to the home equity line of credit offer. If you remember the performance measures from the single classification tree model that we constructed in previous demonstrations, you will find that overall the bagging ensemble tree model provides a slight improvement in the predictive performance as compared to the single tree classification model. This is not surprising because an ensemble tree model tends to offer the wisdom from the crowd and has a lower chance of overfitting one data set. However, in practice, whether an ensemble tree model would deliver better performance is not guaranteed. It is entirely dependent on the data and the relationship in the case. Finally, let's score the 20 new cases. We are going to first import the data from the HELOC underscore score worksheet into a data frame and label it my score data. As you can see, the score data has only three predictor variables, age, sex, and income. Let's return to our R script. We are going to use the predict function to produce the predicted class memberships and the probabilities for the new cases using the bagging ensemble tree. We first need to convert the categorical predictor variable, sex, to a factor variable so that it is consistent with the sex variable in the bagging tree model.
Let's run it. We then predict the class memberships and the probability values for the 20 new cases using the following lines. Let's run these lines of code. As you can see from the result, we are able to predict the class memberships of the 20 new customers as well as their probabilities of belonging to class 0 or class 1 here. So this is how to create a bagging ensemble tree model in R. As we mentioned earlier, the popular random forest or random tree ensemble model also uses the random forest function, as the bagging tree model does. You only need to make one modification to the statement to produce the random forest model. The key difference between the bagging and the random forest models is that the latter uses a random selection of the predictor variables for constructing each single tree model. So in the random forest function, if we specify that we are using only two predictors instead of all three predictors for each single tree, then R will randomly select only two predictor variables each time when it constructs a single tree model. As a rule of thumb, we would use the square root of the number of predictor variables as the number of randomly selected predictors for the random tree models. So for example, if there are nine predictor variables, we would use the square root of nine, which is three randomly selected predictors for each single tree model. In this case, we only have three predictor variables and the square root of 3 is between 1 and 2. Therefore, we are going to use two predictor variables for each single tree. We can create a random forest tree by entering these commands. In order to get the same results as I do here, we need to again set the random seed to 1. And we create the random forest tree by specifying using only two predictor variables for each single tree. The new ensemble model is going to be called random forest underscore tree.
So using this line of code, you will be able to create a random forest model instead of a bagging ensemble model. So the rest of the process is the same as the bagging tree model, so I'm not going to repeat it here. Now let's create a boosting ensemble tree. R uses the boosting function of the add bag package to create ensemble tree models that implement the boosting strategy. Due to the technical requirements of the add bag package, we create the boosting tree model slightly differently from the process of creating bagging and the random forest tree models. Let's first import the data from the HELOC underscore data worksheet into a data frame and label it my data. I'm going to start a new R script here. You need to install and load the correct gains, PLC, and add back packages. If you have not installed them, please install the packages using the install.packages function. If you have installed them, load them using the library function. Now run these four lines of code to load the packages. Now the next step is very important because the addback package requires the use of data frame class objects. We need to convert my data to a data frame class object using the data.frame function. We also need to convert the categorical variables in this case sex and HELOC to factor variables as required by the package. Enter the following lines of code. Now let's run these three lines of code. Now we are going to partition the data into 60% training and 40% validation. Make sure you set the random C21 so that you get the same partitions as I do.
Randy Slice to partition the data. Now we are going to use the boosting function to construct the ensemble tree model using the boosting strategy. To ensure that we all get the same cross-validation results, we need to also set the random seed to 1 first. For the boosting function, you need to provide the model structure, data set, and the number of single tree models to create. The M final option specifies the number of weak learners or single tree models to create in this function. Enter the following lines. Let's run it. Again, you won't see a tree visually from this model because it is an ensemble model. However, we can evaluate the performance of the model using the validation data. The following comments create the confusion matrix by comparing the predicted class memberships and actual class memberships of the validation data sets. For boosting tree models, the predict function produces a list named prediction here, which includes predicted class memberships and probabilities. You can access the predicted class memberships and the predicted probabilities using prediction dollar sign class and the prediction dollar sign prob respectively. Let's run these two lines of code. Confusion matrix shows that the accuracy rate, sensitivity, and the specificity are 0 0.8, 0 0.5577, and 0 0.8851 respectively. Using the default cutoff rate of 0 0.5, the boosting ensemble tree shows the same predictive performance as the bagging ensemble tree does. We can also create the cumulative lift chart, the decile-wise lift chart, and the ROC curve. As the syntax for these performance charts have been discussed in previous sections, I'm not going to repeat it here. The only difference that I want to note is that we access the predicted probability of a validation case belonging to the target class using prediction dollar sign prob square bracket comma two because the class one probabilities are listed in the second column of the object. To save some time, I'm going to copy and paste uh, those codes from the previous example and then make some changes to make it work for our boosting ensemble tree. I'm going to switch to the previous R script we created for bagging tree and copy the code for creating these graphic performance measures.
and pasted them into my script for the boosting tree. To create the gains table, the only change I need to make here is to change how I access the probability values for the boosting tree. If I run these three lines of code, I'll get the gains table for the boosting tree. For plotting the cumulative lift chart, there is no need to make any changes to the original code. So I'm just going to run these two lines of code and get the cumulative lift chart. And for decile-wise lift chart, I can just run the line of code as it is. As you can see, in the boosting tree model, if you target the top 10% of the prospective customers with the highest probability of responding to the offer, uh, you are likely to get almost three times as many customers who actually respond to the offers as if you select these 10% randomly. For creating the ROC curve, I just need to make one small change here about how we access the probability values. And then run these three lines of code. So as you can see, the boosting ensemble model also shows superior performance in terms of specificity and uh, sensitivity across all cutoff values when compared to the baseline model. And the area under the curve value is 0 0.8209 which is actually slightly lower than the AUC value of the ROC curve derived from the bagging ensemble model, suggesting that the bagging tree is the more robust tree in this example. In practice, the relative performance of these ensemble models will depend on the data. So it is recommended that you create all possible models and then compare their performance. Finally, to score the 20 new cases, we import the data from the HELOC underscore score worksheet into a data frame and label it my score data. We need to first convert my score data into a data frame class object and then convert the predict variable sex to a factor variable as required by the package. Then we are going to use the predict function to predict the class memberships and the probabilities of these 20 new cases.
Now let's run these lines of code. If you compare the scoring results, you'll find that the scoring results of the boosting ensemble model are slightly different from those of the bagging ensemble model we created before. For example, the 20th case is classified as class 0 here by the boosting model, whereas it was classified as a class 1 case by the bagging model. As we discussed before, unlike the bagging and the random forest models, the boosting model does not provide variable importance information. This demonstration shows you how to construct various ensemble tree models. As you can see, there is no guarantee that an ensemble tree model will provide better performance over the single tree models. And there is no telling which ensemble tree model would perform the best beforehand. The best approach is to try them all and then determine the best model based on the business situation. Furthermore, ensemble tree models do not provide a visual tree diagram, making the interpretation of the model a little difficult. However, both the bagging and the random forest models would provide variable importance information that can help understand the relationships between the predictors and the target variable.